user experience is helping the user learn your UI over time. And eventually, once they know it, giving them some kind of indication that's very obvious and based on good user experience practices of what they did. And in the case of forms, that means red. <laughs> so I'm a drama queen. I'm not going to use warning. I'm going to use red. So if they type something bad, this is bad. We're going to have a danger input. And you just add this attribute is danger, and it'll automatically outline it in red and kind of apply to the user like, hey, that's not really a number, right? But if it's not, then it'll just remove it, and it'll be a fine normal text field. So let's test that out real quick and see what that looks like if I were to say, is, is danger, is danger mouse, save, and compile. And there you go. You can see that it's red, it's bad. It starts off in life with a negative attitude. So I'll remove that for now. We need to know if something's valid or not. So let's go and add, this is, we're gonna start adding things to our model here. We need to know if what you typed is valid or not. And so we'll just have two properties. We'll say the fair in height field valid of what you typed is valid or not is a Boolean. It's either true or false. Either it's good, right? We know what it is, it's a number or it's nothing, we have no idea what that is. And blank's okay, but you've gotta commit eventually, right? So we'll have that red to provide incentive for people who want to have things correct. And same for the Celsius. We need to have Celsius field valid. It's either true or false. And so we'll default both to false at first, but we could, you know what? I take that back. It's the holidays, let's be positive. Let's give the benefit of doubt to everybody. Make, imagine world peas, so to speak. All right, so that's our basic typed model. We have our field validity there. And we're gonna change this model based on those fields being valid. So if this field isn't valid anymore, let's go ahead and say that field is not valid. So Fahrenheit, you're parsing it, is not valid. Then let's change just that one field on the model. So this is destructuring, very similar to JavaScript if you're used to doing this in JavaScript. It'd be, I take my model and I change the Fahrenheit what is it, Fahrenheit, I can't spell, dude. Fahrenheit, Fair, yeah, I spelled it right. Fahrenheit, field valid. That's why you have a compiler, Jesse, relax. Equals false, right? It's the same thing in Elm, you just get rid of the dots, add a pipe, and it's the same thing that you would do in JavaScript. Otherwise, if it's too legit to quit, then let's set it to true. So if we compile this and run this, it already got my spelling mistake. What is, it doesn't like my Fahrenheit field value. Fahrenheit, because it's a height, it's a, it's, I, I, this is why Elm the compiler is so awesome. Because all these things would blow up in JavaScript and you'd have to hunt around. Elm's like, dude, I got your back. I will hook you up with spelling, basics of programming failures in dynamic languages. Elm is not a dynamic language, it's strictly typed, so you don't have those problems anymore. All right, if we type, we're going to type 32, and it's good. But if we type in, like, let's say cow or something, it's now going to be invalid. And if you go to debug and look, you can see that it's no longer valid because I did, I actually typed in some ASDF. But if I type in 32 and take a look, it is working. Our field valids are now true. Let's go ahead and dynamically show that and by dynamically adding that class.